Well, let's get into the word. I'm going to minister on the power of choice. The power of choice. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. We receive it with thanksgiving. Thank you for revelation that will flow freely. I pray that my message will not be set forth in persuasive, enticing, and plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Holy Spirit and power, a proof by the Spirit and power of God operating on me and stirring in the minds of my hearers their most holy emotions, and thus persuading them. I thank you that our faith does not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. So it's not by might nor by power, but by your Spirit, and we're always careful to give you the glory and praise for what you will do in Jesus' name. Amen. So yeah, I've preached on this many times before, powerful message, the power of choice, and it's important for us to really get this in your spirit, the revelation of it, because um, it will keep you on the right path for many years to come if you apply it correctly. When God created us, he gave us the ability to choose. He gave us the power of choice. Our lives are framed by the choices we make every day. From the moment we get up in the morning till we go to bed at night, we make hundreds of choices throughout the day. And you know what I discovered? That there is no such thing as luck, good or bad. No good luck. No, no, if you never studied, it's no good luck. You either studied or you never studied. You see, in fact, I've taken that term out of my vocabulary. I don't use it anymore. Why? Because the word luck comes from the word Lucifer. And the world of the Spirit doesn't operate on luck. It operates on choices. When you make good choices, things turn out good. When you make bad choices, things turn out bad. Amen? Some people say, why do bad things happen to good people? Because good people make bad choices which causes them to end up in a bad place. Now, I'm not talking about where we experience trials, tribulations, opposition, challenges, because we're loving godly, we're pursuing the right thing, we're standing on the word. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who don't take responsibility for the choices they make, and then when things turn out bad, they blame God and they blame others, but it's the choices they made that landed them up there in the first place. Amen? Are you here? You still love me? Amen, amen, say hey, nah. But it's important for us to understand this because there are too many people who, the Proverbs 19.3 says that um, people ruin their lives and then blame it on God. They make foolish decisions, choices, and then when things doesn't work out, then they blame God. But the world of the, listen to me, and also this, the world of the Spirit doesn't operate on what you mean. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. It doesn't operate on what you mean. It operates on what you say. So be careful what you say. No, I didn't mean to say that. Then if you didn't mean to say, then why did you say it? Amen? So you and I must become more skillful with our decisions, with our choices, and with our words, and what we say. Amen? So it's important that there's no such thing as luck, good or bad. So... um. Your quality of life today is largely a product of the choices you made yesterday. And the choices you make today, the words you speak today, the thoughts you think today, the um, the people you choose to associate today with will determine your quality of life in the future. Show me your friends and I will show you your future. In Proverbs twelve twenty six, it says, The righteous should choose his friends carefully. For the way of the wicked leads them astray. So you and I must choose our friends wisely. Amen. Hang around people who are stronger than you spiritually. If they let you. (laughs) Amen. I'm not. (laughs) Because they. And then even if you feel uncomfortable. Even if you feel like you're out of place. Just sit there. And listen to them. And let their strength pull you up. To a higher level, not only spiritually, maybe with business, maybe even just with older people who are wise. Just sit and be quiet and listen to their wisdom and their experience and watch how they pull you up to a higher level. Amen. Are you here? Don't be so quiet on me, man. Are you here? Say amen, Pastor. So praise God. So you must be, listen, you must be able to make choices and decisions without being influenced by others. 
We cannot allow our choices and our decisions to be influenced by, by friends or social media or by our past. We must make these choices and decisions without being influenced by others. Sometimes we are more concerned with what, with what others think of us than what God thinks. So we worship at the altar of acceptance. But in trying to be accepted, there is the danger of compromising the very things we are called to stand for. Amen. In John 12, verse 42 to 43, it says, Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, in Jesus. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him. Lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. You and I must love the praises of God more than the praises of men. Amen. Choose God. Choose life today. Amen. Listen to me. When you are in a compromising situation. Amen. That's not the time to become weaker. That's the time you get tougher. That's the time you stand your ground. Because whatever you compromise to keep, you're going to lose anyway. So you and I must learn to make decisions without being influenced by others. Even if they throw us out, even if they reject us, even if they lie about us, we have to stand our ground. Amen? If the boss says, no, you can do this and do that, that is unethical, you're going to have to stand your ground and say, no, sir, I cannot do that. That's not right. That goes against my values, my principles in the world. Don't you want to do it? Otherwise, you're going to lose your job. Well, then I lose my job. But I cannot do what is unethical. Amen? The three Hebrew boys in the fire. If you bow, you'll burn. If you don't bow, you won't burn. Sometimes it looks as if, and I mean, when you decide not to bow, the enemy makes the fire seven times hotter. But you have to stand your ground. You cannot be influenced by others and go with the majority. The majority is not always right. Amen? So, God gave us the power to choose. We can either choose life or we can choose death. If you choose life, the result will be blessing. If you choose death, the result will be the curse. In Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. So God actually gave a, a, a graphic illustration um, a uh, actual illustration of two mountains where there was the blessing mountain and the curse mountain in Israel. And you'll actually see today that curse mountain is, that's where they pronounce all the curses and the other million or so Israelites were stu stood on the blessing mountain. They pronounce all the blessings. And if you look at that curse mountain, it's actually, uh, it's actually nothing grows on that mountain. And you look at the blessing mountain and you see how we grown. But God was trying to show them. He was saying, listen guys, I already made my choice. I choose you. I love you. I bless you. This is the blessings. This is what will happen if you go with the curse. But I, I'm encouraging you. God says, choose life. You can choose death, but choose life. You can choose the curse, but choose the blessing. And so every day, there are hundreds of choices that he said before us that you and I must be aware of to choose. Because many people today are blaming God, they're blaming the government, they're blaming parents, they're blaming the color of their skin, they're blaming everybody, but not taking responsibility for the choices they made that landed them up there in the first place. And you and I must take responsibility. Amen? If you're watching me today, listen to me under the sound of my voice, you must take responsibility. Because many people are blaming others. Amen? So we say choose life. Amen? We're going to choose life. We're going to choose blessing. So the choices you make today do not only affect you, but they affect your descendants, your children. Do you know that? So be careful how you choose. Be careful how you choose because they affect your children. Choose life. Choose blessing. Now if you are a parent and you've made some bad choices in the past that has affected your children in a negative way, then don't live in condemnation. You can make a new choice. You can pray for them now. You can love them. You can bless them. But don't live in condemnation because that is not of God. Amen? But it's so important for us who are parents to choose life. 
and make sure, you know, because many times the parents want the church to resurrect and bring life what the parents are putting to death at home. No, you must go to church and sort yourself out. No, you must start serving in the church. No, the answer is not serving in the church. You must first go sort out and repent for that. So we must make sure that we live right at home and, and be an example. Amen. I'll sew you back up today. I know it's a bit tight, but it's right. I'll sew you back up before you leave. Now listen, uh, Joshua twenty four fifteen. Now, and if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. He was telling the, the Israelites. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Joshua said, listen guys, you must make up your mind who you're going to serve. You're going to serve those gods or those gods here where you're living. But I'm telling you now already, I made my choice. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's the kind of attitude you and I must have. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I don't care if there's other gods around us, Amorites, serving other people, serving the God of money, serving the God of uh, uh, worshipping at the altar of acceptance. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we're going to do what's right. As for me and my house, we're going to honor God. As for me and my house, we're going to submit to the Lord. We choose life. We choose blessing. Amen. So God leaves the choice up to us. And if you are not sure what to choose, he tells you to choose life. So God cannot make the choice for you. He will inspire you. He will empower you. He will minister to you. He will speak to you. But he will not force your hand and he cannot choose for you. It's up to us to choose life. And then he'll back us to completely to the hill with his power if we choose his way. Amen. You are as close to God today as you've chosen to be. Others out there are as close to God today as they've chosen to be. If you draw near to me, God says, I'll draw near to you. So it's everyone has a choice. You and I must choose life. Choose blessing. Amen. God can't decide for you, but once you've decided, he'll back you completely. Listen, everyone has the right to choose. But once you've chosen... You become a servant to that choice. So be careful how you choose. Everyone has the freedom to choose. But you don't have the freedom to choose the consequences of your choice. So be careful how you choose. Amen. And then some people say, yeah, but some of the things that have happened to me when is not a result of my choices. I never asked for this. I never chose that. And look at where I am. I agree with you 100%. But how you respond now to what happened to you is your choice. You can choose to be better or better. You can choose to blame or you can choose to forgive. You see, everyone has a right to choose. So choose life. Choose life. Amen. We must be able to carry our own bag. Amen. Here's your bag. In this bag is your thoughts, your feelings, your actions, your words, your choices, everything. You see, this is, I can carry this bag. This is my responsibility. Now, what people want to do is, no, you carry my bag for me. You decide for me. What do you mean I must decide for you? I mean, think about Jonah on the way. He said, no, um, guys, if you, uh, he said, I know I'm the, re I'm the cause of the storm. Just throw me over and the sea will become calm for you. Will become calm for you. Just throw me over. Now, why must I throw you over if you know you're the problem? Why don't you jump? Because now you want me to throw you over so I can feel bad for throwing you over. But you're chasing the reason for this season. <laughs> No, really, people like to blame everybody for the, you know. I mean, you chose life. You chose to come to church. Everyone had that choice. I mean, I'm not condemning people who don't. I'm just saying everyone makes choices. Amen. You choose. We choose to forgive. We choose to love. We choose to let go. We choose to give. We choose to tithe. We choose to honor. And then people get mad when things don't work out in their lives. Amen. 
Listen to this. I love this scripture. 1 Kings 18 verse 21 in the message. Elijah challenged the people. How long are you going to sit on the fence? If God is the real God, follow him. If it's Baal, follow him. Make up your minds. Make up your minds. People must make up their mind. Are you going to serve God or are you going to serve the devil? Baal. Amen. We choose life. We're going to serve God. Amen. We're going to choose that's, we've made up our, so choose life. Choose forgiveness today. Choose blessing. Choose God's word. Choose obedience. Choose humility. Amen. It's important. Look at, to, listen, listen to the two examples of the power of choice. Jonathan Edwards was a great preacher. In fact, he was known as the father of the great awakening in the U.S. His father and great grandfather were also preachers of the gospel. So with Jonathan Edwards, when they traced more than 400 of his direct descendants, this is what they found. Two vice presidents, six congressmen, 14 university presidents, 100 professors, 100 ministers of the gospel or missionaries, 120 were lawyers, judges and doctors. They also found many authors, editors and journalists. Almost every major American industry had an ancestor of Jonathan Edwards involved in it. The power of choice. Look at how his descendants. Now look at the, uh, this was, they trace back the family tree of a man called Abraham Jakes, who also lived in the latter half of the 1700s. Jakes was a murderer who never believed in God. Among the over 1,200 direct descendants traced, an astounding pattern was found. The results showed 400 alcoholics and drug addicts. 810 paupers. 130 convicted criminals, 80 habitual thieves and pickpockets, and 7 murderers who were hanged or died in an electric chair. Of the 1,200, only 20 ever learned a trade, and half of them learned it in prison. So of those two examples should prove to us that the choices we make not only affect us, but the future generations to come. Be careful how you choose. You and I must be careful how we choose. We can choose life. We can choose blessing. We can choose to live honorably in the midst of a dishonorable society. Amen. And you know what? My prayer for you this morning is that in your darkest day and your darkest moment, in your garden of a Gethsemane, where you are under so much attack, I pray in that moment you will choose life and not death. Choose blessing at that time, not the curse. Don't make permanent decisions in temporary situations. Hear from God first what to do. But don't make, oh, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to go, I just want to, because you know what? The choices you make can affect future generations to come. Amen? Amen. In Matthew 23, 37 to 38 in the Amplified Classic, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, this is what Jesus was saying murdering the prophets and stoning those who are saying to you, how often would I have gathered your children together as a mother fowl gathers a brood under her wings and you refuse? Behold, your house is forsaken and desolate, abandoned and left destitute of God's help. Was that God's will for them a thousand times? No, it wasn't God's will for their house to be left desolate and forsaken and without his help. It was his, he's saying, guys, I want to gather you like a mother fowl gathers the chicks and protect you and provide for you and watch over you. And it says, but you refuse. So now, because you don't want me, you have to, then your house will be left desolate, forsaken, without God's help. How many times, even as pastors, we try to help people, all the prophets, it says there, Murdering the prophets and stoning those who were sent to you. How many people we, we get sent to them? God sends them the answer. God sends them help. God sends them, listen, come this way, turn this way. But they refuse. You see, because God can't choose for them. God can't choose. They still, you can take the, the horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. Amen. So I'm just saying to you, it, 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 it challenges you. You as a person to make right choices. And second part is also as a parent, as a leader, as a person. It also should re- release you and relieve you of that pressure of trying to be everywhere, do everything 
help everyone that doesn't want help. You must let go and let God take care of that situation for you. And let God and enjoy your relationship with the Lord. Because many times we, Job kept on sacrificing, kept on sacrificing. Perhaps his children had, had sinned. He wasn't even certain. And he, he never loved his life because he kept on having to sacrifice. So I'm not saying we, we ignore, but I'm saying you also need to know your limits. This is where I end. This is where you begin. Amen? This is where I end and this is where you begin. So... But how many of you are ready? Say, say good news. Here's some good news. Say good news, pastor. Good news. Here's good news. The good news is your last choice is not your last choice. You can make a new choice that can set you on a new course that will create a new cycle of blessing in your life. Do you know the prodigal son made some bad choices? He decided he was going to party and spend all that he had and his and his choices landed him in big trouble. But there was a way out. I mean, he never thought he's going to end up with the pigs. He just thought, hey, I can't party for nothing, me, bro. Let us look. You see, the devil only shows you the prodigal son's hotel suite. He never shows you the pig pen where he lands up. He just shows you the nice things. He doesn't show you where people end up with sin. That is why the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So, so wages means you, they, they keep on sinning, they keep on sinning, they keep on sinning, and then one day, payday comes. Judgment comes. So judgment is like this. You go into Durban, the signpost says, Durban 600 Ks. Durban 500 Ks. Durban 400 Ks. If you don't want to end up in Durban, you better turn around and go that way. Because, you see, judgment, death, 500 Ks. Death, 400 Ks. If the people don't want to end up in death, they better turn around. Because judgment's coming. Wages of sin comes. And it pays, and it's horrible, then they blame God. I'm telling you, I, I, I know of a particular person, I mean, of, I'm just thinking of this particular person. I actually saw the effects of sin and the effects of the choices he made, how eventually when we visited him and his home, it was like a complete, it was like Kersville in that place. It used to be flourishing and green and beautiful and lovely. But because of the choice he made that caused his family to be broken up, I'm telling you, by the time we came to encourage him, it was so bad. I, f I thought, like, is this a real? It looked like hey, night. Absolute curse. I'm telling you, and, and people don't connect the dots because it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, think of it. The Bible says that adultery and, and, and go in with other, you know, fornication and prostitutes is, will kill you. Obviously, we recognize and know that it's, it brings death, but many people don't realize that it doesn't bring death immediately. Otherwise, the whole world will be less populated by now if it happened immediately. But what happens is only a la later on, they begin to see you, here's the effects. And they don't connect the dots, they don't see. So I'm not being negative, I'm being challenging because people need to wake up to this. They can't keep thinking you make, now the good news is if you make a new choice, you can get on a new course. But you can't continue going down that road and then think they're going to end up in a good place. Amen? So look at this. This uh, Luke 15 with the, the prodigal son, verse 11. Then he said, a certain man had two sons, and the young of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he, the father, divided to them his livelihood. He made a choice. Father, I want my portion of my inheritance, and I'm going now. The father never stopped him. He let him make his choice. And he divided the inheritance. Verse 13. And not many days after, I want you to take note of all the choices in this passage. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions or his inheritance with prodigal living, parting, wasted living. And But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want or in lack. He spent all. Then he went and... Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. So they made another choice. 
he never, God never joined him. He went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And that man, because of association, caused him to end up living with the pigs. Go feed my pigs. And he, that's the choice he made. And you know, Jews have no dealings with pigs. And look at where this man is now, in a pig's time. He, so he made a choice to join himself. Verse 16, and he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pots that the swine ate and no one gave him anything. You know, no one gave him anything. You know why? Because when he had all, he never gave to anyone. He spent all. He spent all his money. He never thought about tithing. He never thought about blessing others and giving others. Because when, you see, sowing seed prevents lack in your future. But those who withhold their seed and keep only end up with more needs. So he spent all he never had. And there was, and then the famine hit the whole land. So it's important for us as Christians, as people, to save, to put away for a rainy day. Amen? Ooh, are we here? <laughs> Say amen, Pastor. Amen. Don't shout us down. Those, you know, in marriage, you get the savers and you get the spenders. Which one, which one are you? Husband, wife, are you the spender or are you the saver? Amen? Amen? Like I say to you, know, as, uh, w- uh, marriage is a workshop where the husband works and the wife shops. Amen. And then I put it on Facebook, a other lady comment, she said, Oh, Pastor, it's turned around now. Now the wives must work and the husband is shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Verse 17, but here's a new choice he made. But when he came to himself, came to his senses, that's the most powerful scripture in, that ver- in this passage. He came to his senses, he realized, what am I doing here? He said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Praise God, he made a new choice, and I want to encourage you today. Maybe you missed it and messed up, but make a new choice today. Make a new choice that will land you up in a new place with God. Your father's not angry at you. The father's not pointing a finger at you. God, this is the good news, is that our heavenly fa- we can make new choices. Amen. He came to himself. All you have to do is repent. Verse 20, and he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Praise God. He was smelling like pig when the father still kissed him. Hallelujah. That's how much our father loves us. Even if you messed up, still smelling like sun, he'll still kiss you and love you and come home, my son. I'm so glad you're home. Now notice the father never ran after him, but the father waited. He was waiting. His arms were open. His heart was open to receive him. As parents, we must be open. As churches, we must be open when the prodigals come back and people who are, let we we must forgive them and embrace them. Not saying, woo, it's been years, eh? I'm so glad you're back. No, let's not condemn them. Let's love them. Let's embrace them. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. He acknowledged it. He repented. He repented before God and he repented before his father. And am no longer worthy to be called your son. This is his whole rehearsal and then he actually plays it out when he comes. But the father said to his servants, before he can say, make me like one of your hired servants, the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For thus my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Praise God. The father didn't need another servant. He needed a son to come back. And take his rightful place in the house. He had a lot of servants already. Thank God. There's too many Christians that want to be servants. You first and foremost a son and a daughter of Almighty God. And then out of me knowing I'm a son, I choose to serve my father. Father, I'm on assignment. Where do you want me to go? Where would you like me to be? Where, what would you like me to do? Then I'm serving my father. But I'm a son. I belong. Amen. If I need anything, I go to my father. He takes care of us. Amen. So, thank God, his father again chose to forgive him and restore him. Look, the con- 
the story continues, verse 25. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came in through near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Look at the older brother. He made a choice to be bitter, to be angry, to be envious and jealous of his brother. He not even honoring his father's request to come in, and he said, no. He was angry and wouldn't go in. He made made a choice. So I'm saying to you, everything in this life is revolves around choices. And you and I can't force people to choose to forgive, choose to there's some people that they they'll they'll only be happy when they're going to be with the Lord. No matter how much you try and help them, but stop that now, do this now. No, no, no. Then it's like, okay. Love you, my sister, love you, my brother, I'll meet you in heaven. (laughs) But J. <laughs> now I'm telling you really serious because sometimes people lose days and days and nights of sleep worrying about. You can't force people. You can pray for them. You pray that their eyes will be open, that they will come to their senses like a prodigal son. But you can't choose for them. Amen. So therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. You see, another one serving. The father wants a son. He is also serving. I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. He's lying. He's been dishonest. There at the beginning, the father divided the inheritance between the two of them. He could have had as many spit prizes as he wanted. But no, he is rather mad, angry. He's trying to get his father's approval. He's already approved. But as soon as the son of yours came, not my brother, the son of yours, this, you know, the husband and wife, this child of yours, now it's your child. <laughs> no, how you know, the son of yours came. And who has devoured, devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed a fatted calf for him. No mention of prostitutes. He's the one that's out in the field thinking about prostitutes. There was no mention about prostitutes. He's angry because he was, brother was sinning and he couldn't go sin. He didn't have the guts to go sin. <laughs> so now he's mad with his brother. That could be just so young. Know, look at you, you were still not serving the Lord. Every week I'm here serving at Vessel Church, setting up the sound. You just come back and just like that you get blessed with a car. <clears throat> and angry. What your heart? Your heavenly father is rich unto all who calls upon him. He's got enough love for all of us. Let's keep our hearts in the right place. Amen. He chose chose to stay at home and serve instead of taking his place as a son in the house. And he said to him, you son, you are always with me. And all that I have is yours. All that the father has is yours. Take your rightful place, child of God, today. Stop living in fear. Stop living in condemnation. Stop living with being angry. Make a new choice and keep choosing life. It was right that we should make Mary and be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. Amen. So listen to me. Our God is the great rectifier, is the great changer, and is the great one of grace that can turn your mistakes for your good. He's a, he's a good God. He can turn it around. Amen. I mean, yes, David, he committed adultery with Bathsheba. He messed up. He had his uh, husband Uriah killed. But when Nathan confronted him, the prophet, he repented. He never said, oh, no, you know, it's Bathsheba. She shouldn't have been there, bathing there, that I could see it. He said, no, Lord, forgive me, I sinned. That's all he did. That's what you God wants. Just repent, I sinned. Like this prodigal son, I sinned. Not blame anyone, no, I sinned. So in, in, with Saul, he pretended to be repenting, but he never repented. He said, no, it's because of the people. That's why I never killed that man. So it's important for us to take responsibility. Second Corinthians 5, 19 to 20, last scripture. It was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself. Listen, not counting up and holding against men their trespasses, but canceling them. God has canceled your sins. God is not holding anything against you. He has forgiven you. The key now, you must forgive yourself for the mistakes you made, for the choices that landed you up in that place. Just repent, but don't live in fear and in condemnation. God has forgiven you. He's not counting up. He's not an emotional bookkeeper who's keeping record of all your wrongs. 
Now He's forgiven you. You need to forgive yourself and get up and commit to us the message of reconciliation of the restoration to favor. So you are forgiven today. Say, I'm forgiven. forgiven. Amen. Stop blaming yourself. Stop blaming others. Stop blaming everyone. You and I must take responsibility. Just those who are listening under the sound of my voice, you must take responsibility. And then when we do, we can make better choices that will land us up in a better place. Amen. Amen. I mean, yes, my wife, I mean, only now she recently, she's learning to submit to me more and more, <laughs> slowly. Amen. But I mean, it was tough. You, 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 you. <laughs> Telling you marriage is not for sissies, man. You, 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 you. Married 28 years in December. She keeps me going, yo. yo. But I'm telling you, every time, both sides, we have to choose life. Amen? We have to say, okay. I mean, Bobby, that's, yeah, she has to choose life. All the older that is married for many years, they had to choose life. It's not easy, but it's worth it. It's worth it to follow God. It pays to follow Him. It pays to obey Him. It pays to serve Him. It pays to stay in the stay. Stay focused and place, stay where God's planted you and placed you. Amen? And, and, and you begin to see the results of your choices in time to come. So let me close with this quote. Even though you can't go back and make a brand new start, anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. Hallelujah. Amen. That's good news. Amen. We can start from now and make a brand new ending. Come on, let's stand this morning and let's pray. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So today, God's not holding anything against you. God's just challenging us and encouraging us to make sure that we choose life and choose Him. Amen? That both you and your descendants may love. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ministered your word today, Father, and I pray and ask you now to come by the power of the Holy Spirit and that you confirm your word with signs following. Father God, I thank you that failure is not fatal with you, God. I pray that you'll help us not to build monuments to our failures and to our mistakes and our past sins, but that, God, we thank you that there's forgiveness with you, there's cleansing with you. And today, Father, that's, if that is where you are right now, just, just repent right now. Just repent if you've missed it, you messed up, just repent. Your, your Father loves you. Father, we repent this morning. Forgive us for where we've chosen and made the wrong choice. Today we choose life. Today we thank you that we've come to our senses. And we thank you, Father, that there's forgiveness with you. There's cleansing with you. Strengthen your people today, Father. Thank you. Thank you for new beginnings. Thank you for new things that will begin to spring forth in the lives of your precious people as they make the new choice. Thank you that you will confirm, you will confirm it in the name of Jesus. I'm thinking of a particular guy many years ago at, uh, when we were still in Bosman. He said to me, you know, Pastor, um, him and his wife were really struggling financially and they came and they began to learn about tithing and giving. And he was believing God for this job at Absa. And he was, it was going on like for months. And you know what he did? He said that day he turned to his wife and he said, from this day onwards we are tithing in this church. And he says the next day he got a phone call saying you got the job. He never even acted. He acted on it because God looks on the heart. He already made the decision. He acted. And you know what? He got a job, a massive promotion, increase. Why? Because he made the decision. He made the choice. Some of you, you need to choose to honor God and to do that. You need to, some of you need to choose to forgive those who hurt you, family, friends that have maybe betrayed you. I know of a family member who loaned 6000 from me and Pastor Lorna and years ago. And it bothered me, it affected me. I, he promised he'll give it back by 15 December. And he never. And then went 23 December and 24. And what, what made it worse is that 
I saw his children walking out of Clearwater Mall with abundance of Christmas gifts. And I'm thinking, this man's not answering my call. And yeah, I'm walking, it's like a devil was twisting that knife in to make, and I had to forgive him, and I had to forgive him. And I said, Lord, I'm not, I'm not, I never sinned against him, he sinned against me, but I forgive him, I forgive him. I'm choosing forgiveness, I'm choosing not to be bitter, I'm choosing life. But he, you know, I mean, think about, you know, those who borrowed money from you. You, you don't see them, you just see the 6,000. You just see the thousand red. You're not seeing them, you just see it. And that's all I saw. And then in May, as I was praying one Saturday night, the Lord said, let's take that prayer. You always pray, turn your hearts into ours and pray today and release that seed. Forgive him and release it. He said, you haven't lost the money. Sow it. Sow it as a seed. Sow it as a seed. That Saturday night, I released it, sowed it as a seed. The Thursday, somebody, a guy that I did his wedding for him and his wife, they lived in Vitbank. He phones me, says, Pastor, give me your bank details. He puts 10,000 rand in my account. Look at how quickly, you know what was happening? The seed was not in the ground. It was still in my hand. It was still in my mind. It was still, and God said, get the seed in the ground. Forgive it, release it. I can bless you more. And I've seen that happen with, with even before that, with, we, 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 we got money to buy speakers for the church and a mixer and all that type of thing. I paid the guy and he ran away with the money. He only sent me the mixer. And I, I went and opened up a, a case at the police station. I went to, I went to go look for him at his business gone. And it was bothering me. Every board meeting, we, we, it's coming up in the minutes. And eventually one day the Lord said, Tonight, when you have your board meeting, have communion over it and release that money. Forgive him and let it go. That night we did it. As soon as we released it, within two, uh, under two months, the ministry got blessed with a half a million rand. What did we do? We released it. We got the seed in the ground. And I'm saying many times we are holding on to what people did to us and, and, and pain. Just release it and say, Lord, I haven't lost this money. I forgive them and I release it. Because people are human and they, they can make mistakes and they betray and they do wrong things. But we haven't lost it if we do it His way. He can bless you. He can heal your body. He can restore you if we do it His way. Amen. See, these type of things are not, they are caught. Sometimes they're not taught. You must catch it in the spiritual realm. Because they'll change your life. They'll change your life. I got another testimony, but that one's still too fresh. <laughs> it's too soon. <laughs> But it's a nice one. <laughs> a nice one. But that one we'll, we'll maybe tell you next year, you know. <laughs> but God is good. He's faithful. If you trust. So let's bless you, Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for every person today. Help them, Lord, to forgive. Help them, Lord, to release. Help them, Lord, to get the seed in the ground. And help them, Lord. Thank you that we, have, we agree with them that they will see a harvest of fruitfulness in their lives because of making the right choice and the right decision. Help us, Lord, to make decisions without being influenced by others. Help us to stand our ground. Husbands, you the head of that wife and that home. You make the decision. Don't blame your wife when you get to heaven. You decide and say, no, my wife, we're doing what's right. We're going to honor God. We're going to obey Him. We're going to do what's right. Don't blame your wife. You are responsible as the, as the man. you leading that and God's going to hold you responsible. You cannot allow, if, if it's in line with the word, you choose life and you do what's right. And God will bless you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus.